Good evening and welcome to the September 6, 2017 meeting of the Public Works Committee of the Abington Township Board of Commissioners. And may I have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Thank you. Our first order of business this evening is to approve the minutes of the July 5, 2017 Public Works Committee meeting. And may I have a motion to approve? Moved. I have a second? Second. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Public Works Committee has one item of business this evening, PW1, and this is a motion to accept the award of a small water and sewer grant from the Commonwealth Financing Authority, and I so move. Second. Are there any comments or questions from members of the committee? Fellow commissioners. Do we want to get, can we get an explanation on this? Sure. Please. George, would you like to provide a brief explanation for us? Um, last October, we submitted an application for um, a grant uh, through the what it's called the Small Water and Sewer Grant Program. It's for anything with sanitary sewer related uh, rehabilitation repair projects, which we just finished up this past January or the last two years. We had our own project, so it fit in to our program perfectly, and we were awarded a grant for a hundred thousand dollars. Congratulations. Any questions about that summary? Any further comments from staff? Members of the audience? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That concludes our formal agenda. We will now open it up for comments from members of the audience about matters pertaining to public works. <coughs> Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. You probably don't want to hear about my streets, so today I'll ask you about your minutes. And who, who paraphrases your minutes for you? They're written by Liz here. Okay. Um, and, and that's always? And, well, it's been and the practice as long as I've been on the board, so I, I can't speak to anything prior to that. Okay. And then they end up from there into the packet? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hold the room. Well, obviously, yes. So I mean, the township manager reviews them as well before they go into the packet, but then they go out to the board members. Thank you for that clarification. Are there any other comments from members of the audience? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? Moved. Second. Thank you. Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee meeting for September 6, 2017. And may I have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Oh, did you send me out? Sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure if my hips are. I wasn't sure if my hearing was going. It's the uh, smell the that's getting to me. Fumes. First, we have a motion to approve the minutes of the July 5th, 2017 Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee meeting, and I so move. Second. I moved and seconded. Any comments or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. The minutes are approved. And the Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee has no business this evening. Uh, so with that, we will uh, take comments on general matters of Code Enforcement and Land Development. Any comments from commissioners? On anyone in the audience? Your name and address for the record and three minutes, please. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. I like the nice, big, bright room. Um, <clears throat> I guess it's going to hold a lot more people. So um, the first thing is, in, in regard to the minutes, um, they are not coming out um, as has been 
<laughs> for the 12 years that I've been here, a complaint that we've had um, for 12 years. So um, they're not coming out to reflect generally what we said. So in the, in the um, code enforcement uh, minutes, they were largely reflected what I said. Um, I, I do want to correct um, last time I talked about the fact that um, the code enforcement laws perhaps needed to be tightened up if they, we couldn't figure out how to use them. But what I um, didn't make clear, and, and so that didn't come out in the minutes, and that's because I didn't make it clear, was that it is a, my absolute confirmed belief that we simply have a code department that is not using the tools that they have and that the laws that we have are actually adequate to do what for instance the vacant property committee has been set up to do and by proof of that is the fact that the vacant property committee has already made incredible progress but not because of a conservatorship or anything else but only because they sent the letters, they followed up, they said if you don't do this, there's going to be a penalty, and voila, things were cleaned up. So this has been my concern with you, Mr. Chair, that as chair of the Code Enforcement Committee, and the number of times that I have told you that we have a major problem throughout this township with um, code enforcement not being enforced equally, not being enforced properly, at times not being enforced at all, which causes a great deal of trouble. In my own case, I've told you well over $100,000 was the final cost of the mess that was made by a lack of code enforcement issues. So, so in, in repeatedly telling you that we have a problem, I have never once had you inquire how we might work together to fix that. That's a serious problem, Mr. Sanchez. And if you are representing the people of this township as the chair of the code department and the code issues, then you need to do something. <coughs> it's not okay. People are being hurt all over this township. And other people are getting benefits that they shouldn't have. As you know, in the colonnade, that was an example of code enforcement gone awry while somebody benefited big time from that, from the misery of other people. So it's a very important issue. Am I going to hear from you? Your time has expired. Am I go this is a question, and questions, if they can be answered, are to be answered from the podium. Am I going to hear from you? Thank you for your comments. Does that mean no? Are there any other comments? Sounds on? like a no to me. Are there any other comments? Thank you for your comments. Good evening. I'd like to call the Public Safety Committee meeting of September 6, 2017 to order. And can I have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Thank you. And um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of July 5th, 2017, Public Safety Committee meeting. Second. Are there any changes, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes have been approved. Uh, we have two agenda items, and I'm going to I want to make main mention that in PS1, um, starting next month or next time we have PS1, that type of motion with the signs, we will be including the streets, but we neglected to do that this month. It is available if uh, anybody in the public would like to see that. And now I'd like to call on Chief Livingood. Thank you, Commissioner Schreiber. Um, PS1 is a compilation of a number of traffic matters that have already come before this group and um, you have already discussed these. This will be the first of our quarterly submissions of these ordinances where we gather all the traffic matters together and then do an ordinance every quarter as we explained in a memo that was put out. Thank you. So um, PS1 is a motion to adopt ordinance number 2140 
Mending Chapter 156, Vehicle and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Section 10, U-Turns, and Section 14, Stop Intersections, and Article 3, Parking Regulations, Section 25, Parking Prohibited at All Times, No Parking Between Signs, No Parking Here to Corner, Parking Prohibited Except Certain Hours, No Stopping or Standing, and Section 28, Special Purpose Parking Zones at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on September 14, 2017, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Staff? Oh, I'm sorry. I did have one question, I, going back to what you said before you read the motion. So when they're done quarterly, will that, will they still be able to be implemented or will they have to wait until the ordinance? The, legally, they have to wait until the ordinance is done. Anything that's of an immediate life or, or property safety measure that has to be done, we'll go ahead and put them through as we always did. But um, other than that, the routine, regular traffic things, we'll gather them and then, then do them all quarterly. And that's, a, and I assume we're dealing with a calendar quarter, not some other. Yes, the next one will be December, okay. and we're doing that because there's no committee meetings in January. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Staff or audience? Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane, and I thought we just, he just emailed me this afternoon, and I thought we were going to have specifics on here, or are there? They're not available, they're, but we didn't, we couldn't get it in for tonight's meeting because of that. So it is available if you want to view it, and it is, it, it, we have it, and it's it, it, viewable, but we will have it for the next, the following meeting. So the following meeting, it'll have the specifics in here when you read the motion. So when you read the motion on TV, people listening will know what corner this is on, what you're doing, whether you're putting a one-way in or a stop sign we'll in, say and the streets. what That's corner. What we were going to okay. We'll say the streets. All right. So I have your word on that. Next time, right? Yes. Madam Chair, may I ask a question just for, for clarification? Yes. So. Yes. For example, in the board action item, it lists what intersections are impacted. The ordinance specifically says what streets and inter intersections, right. which is in the binder that's online. So I might understand that that's not what you're asking for. You're asking for the chair to actually read those streets? Well, this is what, what we're trying. Normally, there are only a couple of streets. So it's not like there's usually a giant list of streets. So there's really only a couple of streets. So people on Menlo Avenue do not know if you're putting a stop sign on Menlo Avenue unless they've been in the 500 feet or whatever it is that you've sent them a letter. Other people who travel through there regularly don't know that. So my goal is to get what's being said here comprehensible to the residents who want to use it okay I've talked to many residents who said I, 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 I don't know what they did but all of a sudden there's a stop sign there Ms. Lehman I guess what I'm trying to understand is the information that is online right physically shows the streets that <coughs> these actions are taking place we're on we're asking that to be you're asking for the chair to orally communicate that not just include it yes online yes because Nobody can find things That's what online. she's asking. They they that's why I wanted, because she said, so you'll do that next month. I just wanted to make sure you, you understood yeah, so I think what, what was being asked of you. In the past, it's a little bit more cumbersome, of course, because it's quarterly now. Years ago, we did have, there'd only be two, maybe, of them, and we, it would say the street name. So I am more than happy to say, you know, uh, intersection Keswick Avenue or something in there, but it is, everybody's going to have to put up with me reading something much longer. Okay. And, and I will have to design something so that you could do just what you asked. Yes. That's Thank all. you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Any other? I do have a quick question. So uh, um, I uh, requested a stop sign. I guess we got approval for it in July. So what you're saying is we'll have to wait till September or if you ask for something in June, It'll push it all the way till September. That's really a determination by the chief and Al as to whether or not it rises to the level of, of safety that has to be done sooner. So would yeah, that, I guess that would be my question. Would there ever be circumstances that allowed it to come forth faster? Yeah, absolutely. If anything was an immediate safety issue, sure. we would not wait. But what we would do is put that through immediately at the next meeting, and then we would put any others that we were holding for the quarterly along with that one. Okay. All right. I just 
think sometimes quarterly might be too long, but that'd be my own opinion. So should we see how that goes till the, yeah. for the next meeting in December? Is the sure. next time, and then we can see how many revisit we have. It and go back to I mean, Commissioner, if if something comes up that you feel is important, yeah. you send it through. They're going to look at it immediately. Okay. If it's warranted, it's going to be on the next meeting. It's not going to wait till December. I don't know if that answers your question. It's really the police department's determination as to whether or not it goes. No, I, I guess my concern is we ended school in June, and it was all summer. I've dealt with a lot of traffic issues in my ward, and we've been continually dealing with it. And we did get a lot of answers to what we needed, but this one stop sign. So it's been <coughs> since probably late June, early July, and we're still now we're in September. So. And I'm, I, I'm not complaining. I just, I'm, I'm just questioning that it would go that long. Did, I guess my question is, did you review it, and is it moving forward? Because otherwise, it should have been in here. Yeah. If you evaluated it and it should, and you approved it, it would be in here in this ordinance. Right. That's correct. It should be in there. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 yeah. It is in the I'm just talking about the length of time. That's that's the only concern. So it probably took like an extra month yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Director. Uh, just just to clarify, it's always been the case that if there's if there's something you know a, a stop sign is a good example that is that's deemed an urgent need. It's always been the case that that's gone right through that that's been expedited right. That's that's not that's not change that's not changing just for this that's that's always been the case is that no that anything correct? that's a safety issue we will not wait for okay mm -hmm. I just want to clarify thank you chief so it's more like the um, parking like two hour parking or something that can wait yes okay thank you for the clarification and I think we have to still vote on this don't we yes yes <laughs> so all those in favor aye aye any opposed Motion carries, PS2. <coughs> and am I turning that back to you, or should I read the motion first? Um, for PS2, are we on? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would call on Lieutenant Warner to make a presentation before you do that, please. Okay. Lieutenant, it's on you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Commissioners. Good evening to all of you. Um, this is a pretty exciting time for us. As you know, three years ago, um, you approved um, this safety measure for us to try. And um, you had asked, um, we would like to review it every so often. So two years ago, we said two years, in two years' time, we will take a look at the statistics and see where we stand and give you the results to see if we can go ahead and continue the program in Abington. So as a reminder, the goal, the ultimate goal for this program is safety. And we do that by several ways. Um, and that's through the red light camera enforcement program. Reducing violations, reducing crashes, crashes with injuries, and of course, uh, fatalities. As a reminder to the board and to the public, these are the three locations where our um, red light cameras are placed. Old York Road in Susquehanna, Old York and Welsh, and Fitzwatertown and Moreland, keeping in mind that Fitzwatertown and Moreland, that is only um, a part of the intersection because the other part belongs to Upper Moreland Township. The reason why we chose these locations is because they were the highest number of crashes, crashes with injuries. In addition to, it's very difficult to enforce these intersections by traditional means. In other words, a police officer sitting on a stop sign or a red light witnessing a violation and then attempting to stop them. We are unable to do that, and when we do, it often takes several officers uh, to sit there. The majority of our red light camera violations are non-residents. Um, as of the, over the past two years, it's been 82% have been non-residents of Abington Township. I want to show you one video, a couple videos of each intersection just to drive down the point of how important, and also you'll get a chance to see just how difficult it would be to have a police officer there to try to stop the offenders. This would be Susquehanna and Old York Road. I'd like to call your attention to the school bus that's about to stop at the stoplight and the car behind that school bus and watch what that car does. Lights red. Hmm. Pretty lucky that one, I think. 
Old York Road and Welsh. I'd like to call your attention. This would be looking at St. Anne's in a westerly direction on Old Welsh Road, crossing Old York Road. Um, and take note, it might be a little bit difficult to see, commissioners, but there is a pedestrian that's going to be crossing right here. The pickup truck makes it through the intersection, and behind it is a dump truck. Red light, pedestrian crossing, and you can see him there, even looking back at the dump truck. Of course, especially with a lot of the walkability uh, programs that we're doing in, in here and Montgomery County, that pedestrian safety is certainly a priority as well. Fitzwatertown and Moreland Road, um, draw your attention to the curb lane, and this would be a white minivan. Lights red, it's way red. It can't get much redder. There was a near miss right there. So fortunately, these um, incidents caught on camera were not, um, did not result in a crash. We look at our violations, and this is a very important slide. Um, you can see that that warning period that we had for two months, we had a considerable amount of uh, violations, over 6,000. The first year it dropped considerably. For a whole year, we only had 48.73. And then the second year dropped even further, 33.27. And the number that caught us all off by um, surprise, I should say, uh, was this past year. From 16 to 17, you can see the large increase, over 79% increase in violations. Well, we expected an increase, and the reason is because of technology. Not unlike Apple, uh, Gatso and other camera companies are working to improve technology and an ability to capture images and um, find violators. So I can show you in this particular, uh, ne the next slide, we're now able to capture um, two images of cars going through a red light. So multiple violations are caught. And we believe this has a lot to do with the uptick in our violations. Whoops, my bad. Sorry, I can't do that. Here I thought I had it. There we go. So you can see right here two violations and almost a near miss. So both of those violations uh, were caught. Also, the technology allows us to read the um, license plate much more clearly, so we're able to identify uh, violators. So some of the positive impacts of the red light camera program. Uh, prior to, we went back three years, I believe it was Commissioner Farron had asked maybe if we look at a bigger chunk of time uh, a couple years ago when we went through this, it would give us a better um, picture of how things have worked out for us. So pre-camera, 136 after, three years after, 106 crashes at those intersections, which we think is a pretty good um, difference. So 22% less crashes at those intersections. We thought that was good. We also found that there was a 12% reduction in crashes with injuries over that same time period. Angle crashes, as you'll recall, and we spoke about that before, are the ones that create the most injuries. They are also down by 33%, and even rear end crashes went down. So what's the savings? Any monies that are put out are reimbursed completely and fully. There is absolutely no cost whatsoever down to the last postage stamp. Um, in addition, there is no monies that are out there that aren't reimbursed. No cost or revenue neutral. We thought it might have been a good idea to show you what it would cost the township if we had to use traditional methods. And by that, I can give you an example of Old York Road in Susquehanna. We would need four officers plus a spotter, which we have done before in years past. We put an officer in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and sat in a lawn chair and called out, in, we sure did, not talking about going, we're going way back. Um, it was manpower intensive and not to mention it was extremely expensive. So I wanted to show you, if we did one four hour enforcement per month at each of those intersections, that is our entire traffic enforcement budget for the year. That's a lot of money. If we did it twice at, at all of those intersections, 
you can see that's, that would be double our budget for the year, and that's a, that's a lot of cash. So if we do enforcement the way we're doing it right now at those three intersections, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days all year round, it is a zero cost. There's no increase in our traffic um, enforcement budget. So we're able to spend um, all of that elsewhere throughout the township. Just one more that I thought you might want to see. I'll draw your attention to the middle of the intersection for this near miss. And you can see the smoke from the tires of the car trying to stop. Right there. That's why we feel in the police department that this program is very helpful. It allows us to catch violators. We do believe we have an answer to the reason why the violations went up. Um, but certainly, we think it's a beneficial program. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, Commissioner Schreiber, we'll turn it back to you. Thank you. So, um, any questions from commissioners? Commissioner Spiegelman, start with the committee first. Thank you very much, Commissioner Schreiber. Um, a couple of questions. I guess uh, this can go either lieutenant or chief uh, to either of you. Um, three questions. Um, uh, I know that not terribly long after the last time uh, the, the uh, red light camera program was renewed, um, uh, Gatso was acquired by uh, the census group, is now part of now the, the, the Gatso census group. Um, have, there, have you guys noticed any changes uh, in, in anything just as far, I mean obviously you, you mentioned the technology upgrade, but just as far as uh, how it's been to work with them as the vendor uh, in that uh, time period for the last two right. years? No, they've been a great partner with us and very helpful in explanation. Um, any needs, questions, they've been great. Um, working with our township staff as well with finance, um, we've had no issues. Um, in fact, we invited um, Andrew Noble to come down in case you had more questions about the technology. So he is here and never hesitated and, and came right down. He's sitting behind me. Oh. He is here with us tonight. You may recall him from last time. I do remember. Yeah, so no, it's been great. It's been a great relationship. <coughs> Um, and just a, a couple of sure. just a couple other questions. Um, I know for me, my my past support of uh, of this program, a, a, a contributing factor has been the idea that uh, the Abington Police Department is able to enact this program specifically because they meet uh, certification uh, and accreditation criteria that f you know f few to, to no other uh, police departments in the state meet. Um, and my hope has always been that there might be sim you know, a similar uh, program <coughs> for the introduction of, say, local radar enforcement, which I know is a huge issue because only state police here in Pennsylvania can, can use radar for speed enforcement, or even you know, things like stop sign cameras, which exist in other, in other states. They're used in, uh, in California, they're used in the District of Columbia. Um, is there any, has there been any forward motion on any of that? Are we any closer to, say, a radar speed enforcement program? For Abington Township. For, for Abington Township. Not obviously based on, again, based on the same uh, uh, accreditations uh, criteria. Commissioner, that's stuck up in the legislation. Right now, uh, local law enforcement is, is not allowed uh, to use radar uh, for enforcement of speed. Right now, that is set solely with the state police. So there's, that's, still, that's still clogged up in Harrisburg, basically. Yes. Yes. That is, um, that is correct, Commissioner. We're told that it's as close as it's ever been. But now, of course, we have this budget stalemate, um, which is kind of clogging things up. But um, we will keep you posted if there's any movement on that. We keep a close eye on it. Duly, uh, duly noted. And there's no connection I think that between these two things. Is that correct? No. It, I think that information is in the, in the municipal reporter that we get that tells you what's going on. Well, all right, then. Um, and I, that's it. Pretty much covers what I want to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner? I, I just wanted to know if there were any significant uh, increase in costs with the technology upgrade. No, not at this point. Um, based on the contract that we have with GATSO, uh, there is, in our contract that the township signed, um, they agreed that if there was any advancement in technology, there would, no be there would be no additional cost attributed to us 
uh, during the length of that contract. Okay. Right. Good, decent segue into my next question. And I, I actually asked this question two years ago when this came up for vote, and I just wanted to know if uh, Gatso has made a profit yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay, because after two years, you made zero. Uh, we still have like, Come on up. Yeah, please. <clears throat> I apologize. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. Andrew Noble from Gatso USA, now part of the Census Gatso Group, is uh, so observed. Um, yeah, the, the program as a whole still owes us $335,614. Um, but uh, the technology upgrade we made a year ago, or almost a year ago, last summer, um, has made a significant uh, difference in uh, two different areas. With the tracking radar, is far better than it used to be. So the cameras look the same on the side of the road as they did for the last two years, but internally, the tracking radar is far more accurate. So it's able to get far more concurrent violations at the same time. And secondly, we've added an infrared flash. So at night time, even though you still have the small white light visible flash you see, there's also an infrared flash that goes off at the same time for a third image. And it's by capturing that third image allows for better plate recognition at night time. Okay. So two years, zero. And after four, we've made a profit. We hope so. Is that correct? <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I guess my one question would be... Oh, Fran. Fran. Do you... Yeah, from... Sorry, I uh, your name. Um, would you think that, uh, do you see this, we see an uptick in uh, violations over the last four years. Do you think that as anything, to, do you see that as a pattern with other places that you've used the red light cameras? No, I made the comment two years ago when I was here and, and it stands true today that typically once a new program goes into place, whether it's for speed or for red light mm -hmm. enforcement, after approximately six months, violations drop to about 40% of where they were when they started the program. Okay. And for the most part, they stay there for the life of the program. There's some seasonal changes uh, due to weather. Uh, there's always a new uh, bunch of high schoolers getting a license every year and borrowing their parents' cars and driving through the red light. But this is the increase you see here is purely attributable to the technology we've added. Nothing to do okay. with traffic patterns or anything else. Yeah, okay. Would you think you'd change the signage um, on that area? Like to say, hey, there is red light cameras here. Or, you know. Uh, yes, Commissioner, thanks. Uh, we, we will be doing that. We figured now, if, if we are approved to go forward again, um, we would do another blast and education piece to commuters and to residents about the red light camera program to remind them, put the signboards up and, and so on. Because as mentioned, we would like those violations to be reduced. So yes, we want to make it um, absolutely clear and fair that they, are, they exist and it isn't just white noise that people are driving and seeing those signs and not, not paying attention. Thank you. I was actually going to ask the same thing. The, uh, we talk about with the safety blitz how we shouldn't leave those signs up on people's mm -hmm. lawns all year round because they become part of the landscape yep. and it seems to me that's probably true in this case too that after a while people are not seeing those signs anymore for them, like, if, if they're constantly going through those i would agree yeah mm -hmm. commissioner Bowman. thank you i haven't had any complaints from any of my residents and uh i like the numbers that i just saw it looks like a lot of people are running red lights I think we got this program, though, not because our police were certified or anything, just because our town fit the appropriate size, right? I believe so. Yes. Thanks. I wasn't going to not take the, the compliment, though. <laughs> Commissioner Klein. So the technology upgrade. So you're t at some point, I assume, based on what you just said, that even with the technology upgrade, you're going to see a reduction in, in violations. I'm sorry, I missed the last part of the question. The technology upgrade. Just as you said, I guess at some point, even with the technology upgrade, you're going to start to see a decline in, in violations. I don't know if that would be the case um, because uh, the traffic patterns haven't sta changed. The signage is as it was before. 82% of the violators are from out of town, so um, th there could be some more merit in uh, public, uh, local public um, information. Um, but you've already done a good job on that as a, as a city, as a, as a or township, as it stands. Um, I don't see them declining much from where they are now. I think what we're seeing now is a better, um, a better image, if you like, of what was there two years ago. We just weren't capturing it because the technology wasn't um, able to capture it. 
So do you have this technology in other communities? Yes. And you're, but you just mentioned that you're seeing them as a 40% reduction down to a 40% reduction no, the over, over the, the period the, of time. When the T-Series was introduced to the USA, Abington was one of the first communities to get that new camera. And so typically, your reductions uh, went over a period of time in 2014, 2015, when the program went, first went live. That's when your reductions were primarily seen over those first six or seven months of the program. And what's happened now is they've gone up purely because the technology is capturing more violations that were already happening that we weren't capturing. Or we were capturing them, but maybe we couldn't capture the, the license plate at night or couldn't read it sufficiently well. Okay. Um, just for everybody's advocation, we've talked about this in the Finance Committee, and I think because we get it in our uh, accounts payable, receipt, you know, in the receipts that we pay, and the last payment to GATSO, I believe, was, met, was for the month of May of 2016. If I remember correctly, Tom, you might be able to remember. I think it was roughly, whatever, it was roughly around there, so we're over a year behind year back. June, June in paying them the full $42,000 a month. Um, and that's, I think, is the deal that we have. We, we pay them in full $42,000 increments. So at this point, we're back to, we're still paying back to May of 2016. Um, so just because that question came up. Um, you know, I'm still opposed to this. I don't understand why we're going with a three-year contract at all. I mean, I would rather see a zero, zero contract. Um, as I said from the, from the get-go, I believe this, is, this was a minor, this was a small problem looking for a solution, and I believe it was billed as a, as a program to be a trendsetter in the state of Pennsylvania when we ended up being the only ones other than the city of Philadelphia uh, to have red light cameras. No other municipality in the state of Pennsylvania, even those that are eligible to have red light cameras ever, um, Incorporate, ever enacted them or brought them online. Um, so I, I don't, the numbers, I mean, we're talking about such small increments. This, is, this wasn't a big problem from the beginning. When we were talking about one um, accident, uh, angle, angle crash per month, and we're down to maybe 0.8 angle crashes per month now. So we've got to look at the level of problems we're having here. And I don't think there's enough, in, I don't know if the police department even has the information but I don't know if there's enough information if actual police officers doing once or twice a year, I mean, regardless of whatever the cost is, I mean, if we're saving, if the reduction in angle crashes or the reduction in violations, um, if that is a greater percentage of reduction, then it's worth the money to spend to have that, to have a greater reduction than just, I, you know, as I said before, I still think that the $100 violations are you know, not insignificant, but most people don't like to be pulled over by police officers on a street with their lights flashing and, you know, on the side of the street and on getting a ticket with points. I think there's a psychological aspect to that that actually has more um, deterrent than just receiving a violation in the mail for $100. So. If I could just comment, well, address one part of uh, Commissioner's uh, uh, point. Um, we actually are having folks from uh, the city of Chester coming here on Friday, um, and they, they're inquiring about installing red light, the red light camera program um, up, up to Abington, so we're explaining on how we run the program here. So there may be another city or township um, close by. We'll see. But there is definitely some interest. Thank you. I had another question. 82%, um, does that encompass all of Abington Township mm -hmm. registrations? Does it also include Elkins Park, uh, Jenkintown, and other zip codes? Yes. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners yeah. or comments? Sure. Commissioner? Lieutenant, two questions about the data. Uh, so wondering, have we, um, have we done a statistical analysis pre and post, I mean, to Commissioner Klein's point to answer his question to see if the differences are in fact statistically significant or not? I, I mean, I don't know if the numbers even warrant that, but and secondly, um, do we have information about, um, so are there people who have been serial offenders throughout the time of the program? I and mean, do we have some idea of, you know, how many people or what percentage of the overall violations represent people who have been flagged more than once? So. We, we could get, I can get you that information because there are a few folks that. That's, that's just interesting to see. Yeah. We could certainly uh, do that, definitely. Um, we have not done a statistical analysis of that. Um, we couldn't do the, the pre at this point. 
Um, we didn't know how many people were committing the violations. I'm thinking more about the crashes oh, as crashes? opposed to the violations themselves, yeah. Well, um, maybe we could talk about that sure. and get more details of what that would be. Yep. Um, I wouldn't uh, say that we couldn't do that, certainly. We could certainly give you that, those stats. Okay, thank you. So, I don't know why I'm raising my hand to myself. <laughs> yes, Commissioner. <laughs> so, you know, if we t talk about deterrence and the $100, I know that's one of the points that we've talked about before, if um, getting points or something like that is more of a deterrent. And so I'm wondering if it is or not, or I'm not sure that we can determine that, but certainly not at this inter these three intersections. But there are other intersections that people would get points, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And they so, could get points at those intersections if by chance an officer is at the light and waiting and, and actually sees that happen, uh, they will, can, would per, most likely uh, pull that person over and issue a citation. And so when that happens, if they get, are they, is there any evidence in, I don't know, the literature, it might not be here in Abington, mm -hmm. that points actually make people violate less than if they just get a fine or? I can't say that. I don't have the exact number on that. I know how I feel if I'm stopped by a police officer. Yeah. Um, it deters me. Um, I don't know if that's an overall. I guess what I'm wondering is if you get this in the mail and are you going to still then, after you get it and have to pay your hundred dollars, are you going to be more careful in in those intersections that have red light cameras? Well, we don't have a lot of multiple violators. We do have some, and I can double check on those numbers. So, for the large number of people that we do have going through that are receiving citations, they're not doubling, tripling. So, I don't know that for sure. We could certainly. We could probably get that information. It may be a little time to get it, but we probably could go back and check. I mean, I would suppose if you got points after a while, you might forget that too, but it would take longer. Maybe that is maybe more of a deterrent. Hmm. Or a higher fine, but that's, you know, sort of not a good idea because it has other economic, it, it penalizes some people more than others. Indeed. Have a higher, so just thinking of other penalties if they would make more of a difference or not. Hmm. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, yes. I do. Wasn't the main idea of this, though, that these three intersections where you cannot have a police car sitting other than someone in a lawn chair? That's the correct. The idea was just to prevent some things, not having a police officer pull you over and make you feel nervous and which we all maybe we all haven't been stopped uh, but if you have been stopped it does make you a little nervous and uh, but I thought that was the idea because we don't have a place for a police officer to sit Th that's so correct what else is going to happen at that intersection it's virtually impossible let them keep hitting or doing whatever mm -hmm. to me it's no-brainer but there has been an occasion you were just referring to that somebody just happened to be going through the same in a police officer. Yes. So they have stop at the light, and yeah. somebody didn't see it. Sure. But that's happenstance. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Right. So we do have that comparable. It, it could. Yeah. Any other questions from Commissioner yeah. Myers? Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, not a question. Just just a statement. Um, personally, I have found with these cameras, and I've been in favor of them since the beginning. I certainly. I've not made no secret of that. But I have found that at lights, it has made me a more conscientious driver because when you get to the light and it's yellow and you have that split second to decide to stop or go, now I stop. And I think that makes a difference. And I always said it's not the first car that goes through, it's the second and third one that are after you that concern me. And I can't imagine that this hasn't helped with pedestrian safety um, at these intersections. And two of these intersections I travel through every day, sometimes a couple times, several times a day. And um, I, think, I think it's made a big difference for pedestrian safety. I don't think you can measure that. Um, but 
it makes me feel better knowing that they're safer. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to read the motion now. Oh, I'm sorry. No. And Ms. Schreiber, this. I have to read the, the motion first, though. Sorry, Motion yeah. to adopt ordinance number 2142, an ordinance amending chapter 155, traffic control, article one, no, automated no. light enforcement systems, section 155-17, expiration. And I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Staff, audit. So, Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. A lot of you brought up all the questions that we had. We have a group that's discussing this. I'm the only one here from it, obviously, again. <laughs> but um, one, of the, one of the concerns that I had is that we had not been able to get um, a, a full comprehensive review of what the traffic looked like in the historic fluctuations before the cameras went in. I would like to recommend that we take some other intersections and we actually look at the historic fluctuations and compare them to the red light camera fluctuations and see you know, whether they go up and down almost exactly the same way um, as, as they do with the red light camera. So um, you know, in the um, uh, normal course of things, we had intersections that only had one or two crashes in many cases. So it's hard to go down too far and, and to keep going down, but the, the historic fluctuations are very important to look at. Also, we didn't get any side street data. Um, we did have side street data, but then we were told that there wasn't any and we did have side street data. So those kinds of things are pretty important when you do a program like this. And certainly if you expanded it anywhere else, I would ask that you make sure that that's done before you expanded it. The, um, the issues with the, um, th that you brought up rightfully so, I think is that an economic issue where, you know, if you can keep going through red lights and just pay money, that affects some people and doesn't affect others. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, but I'm wondering if we had repeat offenders, if not, you know, the second time around, they could get points. I don't know if it's possible to do that. Um, I also just read, and I, and I wanted to just confirm, because I, I read this time, and I don't recall reading it before, one of our concerns had been that if somebody goes into the intersection a little ways, that they would get a ticket if they went in after the light was read. And I now understand from reading on the site that only if you go all the way through the intersection when the light's red. Is that right? Or am I wrong on that? You can just address me and we'll see if we can. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just, <laughs> I thought I might get a nod. <laughs> so my question is whether um, Lieutenant Warner could tell us, am I correct that in order for them to get a ticket going through the red light, we no longer are going to ticket somebody who just went over the white line and was waiting there where traffic could go in front of them, but actually that they had to go through the intersection or at least be in the middle of it or something. Mm -hmm. um, so could, could she possibly answer yeah. that do I have any other questions? Or do I understand that correctly? Yeah, I do, but can I get an answer for that one? Because we why never why end why up coming just back tell me to what them. your questions are and, and we'll have her come back up. All right, you'll keep a note of that? Thank you. Um, and so, uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that I don't think that we, we have talked about the fact that the signs are one of the greatest deterrents, that the idea is to deter people and say, okay, there's a light there. So we all know it now. I agree with what Commissioner Myers said. We all know it now, and it does make us drive more carefully. But for the 82% that are coming into this township, if we really want the intersection to be safer and them to slow down, that sign needs to be bigger. I have to tell you, I haven't even seen it yet. I know I've been told that it's there, but I haven't even seen it yet. So it's really not obvious. And I go through that York Road intersection all the time, Susquehanna and York. Um, and the other thing I wanted to ask about was the um, yellow lights being extended. 
okay, because you got lots of information on the fact that these crashes would look very, very different if the yellow lights would be extended. And we, we've been told, as I understand it, that Penn, PennDOT has control of that and won't let us. That's something I think we should be fighting for. If that makes our intersections safer, we should be fighting for that. So thank you. Thank you. And answer on that one? So we're going to have Officer Posey respond to Mrs. Lehman. Okay. I'll start with the um, going through the intersection and stop bars. Nothing's changed since the very beginning of the program when we all sat down with the Commissioner Klein and, and talked about where a violation is. If your car is on that stop bar, we're going to consider you in the intersection and you can continue through the intersection or make your turn. If you're out in the middle of the intersection and a light turns red, you can make your turn, you can go straight, where, where, whichever way you're going, if you're in the intersection. What we're looking for is that your vehicle is behind that white stop bar, that light is red, and then you continue either go through the intersection, make a left-hand turn, make a right-hand turn. Nothing has changed since the beginning of our program. Uh, as far as the signage that's out there, the yellow signs that you see, they're governed by PennDOT. What is out there is what has to be out there by law. So you would need to change law. What we have done in the past and what we want to do again is we put the message boards out there, the big one and the small one, the ones that are being used um, right now, and uh, we get out there and let them know. We put them on the islands and let people know. Besides that, we have it on the TV stations, but also uh, it was just over Penn State since they're back uh, giving them literature. Um, security knows about it to let the students know. We go over to the hospital, let them know since they have a lot of employees. Some of our uh, bigger employers, uh, the Willow Grove Mall, uh, we put information out there. Both of our courts have the information there too. So it's trying to get the word out to the public because we do realize that 82% of the people aren't from Abington Township. So we're trying to get the word out to them. And, you know, and most of them, if they're coming from Philly, are used to the to program that's been over a decade down there. So uh, can I just stop you for one second? So we actually can't change the signs? The, the, the signs that are posted out there, no. They're, they're regulated by the law. It's um, part of 3117 of the vehicle code, it says what the signage has to be. And in fact, they're in the permits for the intersections. And, uh, you know, PennDOT, when we first came out there, you know, in order to have those, um, to, to have the cameras active and have those as a red light camera intersections, those signs have to be out there and where their place is where they're required by PennDOT. And also, PennDOT does control the um, timing of the yellow lights. All our yellow lights are four seconds or five seconds determined by uh, traffic volume, um, the grade of the roadway, the width of the roadway, how much traffic, and they're all controlled by PennDOT, and those times have not changed since the beginning of the program or well before the program. Uh, they're on the permits there, and uh, that's, that's what they're governed by PennDOT. And I think I, I just want to, the, the one other thing that Ms. Lehman um, mentioned was the other intersections. Would they not be comparable, even if we did get historic data, because they're not in that same where there's no where a police officer couldn't be at them? I mean, one of the reasons these three intersections were picked was because they had that issue coming up. So even if we did compare other places, you could have law enforcement people. You would have to even places. you'd have to go back and look. Did we do details there? Was there a beat officer there? Officers. Um, you know, when we get traffic complaints, uh, when we get them from the commissioners and from residents, uh, uh, we put them out to the officers, we put them out through the intranet, we put them paper, uh, you know, our Isaac team may go out there and sit, and when they go out and do direct the patrol, so if they're not answering 911 calls or doing paperwork, we're going through businesses, they'll go out to our hot spots to assist myself and Officer Freed. So they'll go out there. So without knowing if, you know, for any extended period of time where they doing speed enforcement on certain days there, or red light camera enforcement, or we're in the area or something, you know, uh, you'd have to go back and look to see if someone was doing some sort of enforcement there, um, you know, in order to get accurate numbers, uh, what the red light running would look like there, or crashes or anything like that. And right now, the program we're talking about tonight, we are not looking at extending that to other intersections. No, it's right now it's just for the uh, three intersections that were listed, our same three. Yeah. 
I just I wanted to comment on the, the uh, obviously I suppose we said that the the, the type and, and size and placement of the signage is is fixed but um, just from what I've noticed over the years uh, at least some of the major uh, GPS platforms uh, are very much aware of the red light cameras and will warn you I know that Waze does I know that Uber Maps uh, does uh, it's on I, several I, websites yeah. and GPS um, in, in your car to tell you that, that these are automated red light enforcement uh. not being tech savvy myself when I'm driving I did not know that but that's what I'm, I just yeah. something. that's what I'm here for <laughs> and you barely drive so that's interesting. I, but I take Uber but I take Uber a lot because I barely drive <laughs> telling the whole world I barely drive. <laughs> terrible driver all right any other further questions thank you very much officer and um, so I guess it's time to vote. Yes. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. One opposed. Thank you. And um, just another piece of unfinished business. We previously discussed and considered the um, volunteer firefighter tax credit we've talked about before. It is scheduled for the Wednesday, October 4th meeting we're going to have some recommendations at that time. So that will be coming up again. Any comments from the committee for public safety? Audience comments on public safety? So, there are a number of public safety issues here, and one of them, to repeat, is the code enforcement, which you heard. I'm not even going to get an answer again from someone else. And yet, that lack of code enforcement is an absolute safety issue. It is affecting residents all over this township. That particular apartment complex is not the only apartment complex as many of you sitting here know and those of you who are not doing your job to make sure that the code is being enforced and you're leaving people in who you repeatedly have heard are not doing the job and you're not even investigating that is it, it, that puts you directly i believe in in the path of of the the harm that's possible so, and, and there is a, a criminal law that says that you can't make decisions that would, a normal person would not make that would put people in harm. Uh, I forget how it's phrased. I will bring the phrasing to you. Um, so the uh, other issue that I have is I think most residents don't know that we don't investigate all the crimes. I'm trying to understand how many crimes we investigate because that seems to be an issue. I know I've had several. One where they even had the guys in jail and released them and the guys were out the next day calling us and threatening us. Um, other ones where, you know, just no work was done and when I gave the information it wasn't followed up on and these people had warrants. They're surely going to go out and hurt somebody again. So I think it's a, it's a really big issue. I am trying to engage the police in a conversation, but I would like to engage you, Commissioner, as head of public safety in that conversation too. You seem unwilling to engage and I think it's important that you engage in these issues. It's important that you engage in these issues, that you find out that you get back to the resident who has the concerns, that you work with the residents who are bringing these things to the podium and to your attention. And if you're not going to do that, all of us are less safe. It's, it's an extremely important uh, thing. In uh, the case of a recent um, sex crime issue. I just want to let you know you have one minute left. Okay. So. In the case of a recent sex crime issue, someone had almost no contact back as to what was going on, and that person had to keep 
uh, say, bugging them. In addition, I have asked no fewer than three in the police department so far about the issue with DNA, which is one of the best tools that our police have for solving crimes, which is why they're behind, because so many more uh, cases are being submitted for DNA. And they are as much as a year behind. Locally, we have found out they're as much as three months behind. So if you have a perpetrator in your neighborhood and for three months or a year, you don't know if that perpetrator is the, the, the guy or not. Ms. Lindman, it's, your time is up, and I know okay. you've spoken before to the police about this. So thank I you for your comments. I want to engage you and all of you in this issue. It's important that we comments. find the solution together. That's what government's thank about. Thank you. And if there's no other comments, we're going to adjourn. All right, we all have to go to training. Let me get seated. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. All right. It's my pleasure to convene the September 6, 2017 uh, Township of Abington Public Affairs Committee meeting. And uh, can we start with a uh, roll call, please? Here. 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 All right, let's start with approval of the minutes. This is a motion to approve the minutes of the July 5th, 2017 Public Affairs Committee meeting, and I so move. Second. So moved and seconded. Any uh, changes from the uh, committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Excuse all right, the ayes have it. I sent uh, you changes for that and asked you, please, to make those first, corrections. First of all, first of all that, that, who, the question about changes was uh, uh, addressed to the committee. Second of all, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I sent you the corrections oh, for the minutes and asked you please to correct them. I have engaged an email with you this week. It was nothing about any minutes. So uh, please sit down. We're, we're continuing. You will have time to comment. First and only item is PA1. Uh, uh, this is uh, ordinance number 2141. The, a motion to adopt. Ordinance number 2141, amending Chapter 8, Economic Development Committee, Section 2, <coughs> Membership, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, uh, Mr. Manager, do uh, any, any quick background on this for us? As you know, at previous meetings, two in particular, you had uh, instructed the administration to craft and the solicitor to craft an ordinance to change for uh, appointments. That ordinance was amended will be adopted on the 14th and you'll also have that night the appointment of a commi of former commissioner markman is specific so this was really just keeping with and following through with what the board had asked us to do with respect to the economic development committee all right thank you very much uh any uh, questions or comments from members of the committee commissioners in general audience <coughs> So in the selection of the committee, um, which I will talk more about in your next part when you're appointing a particular person, but uh, in your selection of the committee, it does not really, when, when we have developers and others, so Glenside Chamber, for instance, was on there. Glenside Chamber is not on there anymore. There are a couple. But developers should not be developing. They should be answerable to the people in the community. And um, although I know it's not going to change today, I would like to recommend that for the future, we consider having an Economic Development Council with representation from every single ward, from residents of every single ward in this township. And that those wards understand how people want to develop in their district, in their area, and that they go back to, with their commissioner's help, go back to the people in their ward to decide if that's what they would like to have in the development. That's how we don't have the ALEC thing, where we have people who would like to profit from certain things, making up the legislation and the rules and the decisions and the recommendations. 
Instead, we have the residents who decide how they want their community to look. And if developers would like to develop a certain way and would like waivers or whatever else, it's the residents who decide whether those waivers reasonably, logically, and, and preferably should happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, there no other, uh, oh, Commissioner Schreiber, question. So I had forgotten I had this, so I apologize. I'm a little late Sorry. here. Um, in the actual ordinance, I'm wondering if this is a, a change or if this was something I didn't realize before. So we took out the Greater Glenside Chamber of Commerce, and then it says, and the Abington Arts Center, all appointed members shall be voting members of the committee. In addition, a board of commissioners liaison who may be a voting member. I had thought in the past that it was a non-voting position. So is there any that any that's change? change? That's the way the ordinance currently is. We did not make that change. Interesting. The only change we made was we got rid of the Greater Glenside Chamber of Commerce, which no longer exists, and right. we added another at-large seat. Okay. I was a former uh, liaison, and I don't remember having the vote. So that's I don't remember. I, go, I attend the meetings. I don't remember the liaison ever actually voting. We didn't vote. You didn't vote, Pat, right, Peggy? Quite honestly, I don't remember there being a whole lot of votes. Yeah, there wasn't. There, there, right. there aren't a ton of votes. There aren't right. a ton of votes. I don't think that we ever had one. I think we, when we did um, discussion about things. When we had the um, when we wrote up where we had to hire a group to do a plan, we might have voted. Mm -hmm. but yeah, there weren't. There aren't a lot, a lot of votes. votes. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just curious about that. Thank you. All right, any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, PA1 passes. Um, and then just a note on unfinished business, as uh, Manager Manfredi mentioned, uh, as previously discussed and directed by the Board of Commissioners, the following agenda item will be on the Thursday, September 14th, 2017, regular public meeting. Consider motion to appoint Michael Markman to the Township Economic Development Committee to fill the term expiring December 31st, 2018. So that will be uh, next week's meeting. Uh, now we will open the floor to any uh, general comments about the per um, under the purview of the Public Affairs Committee. So I thought you were going to be voting on Mr. Markman's position. So I did, I, I was saving that until you brought that up. Um, perhaps you might have mentioned that. I would have said that earlier. Uh, the concern that I have with Mr. Markman, and I have an article here about Upper Dublin and his recent, you can't, you um, can't do that. His recent thing. So what I just said to you about can we, developers. Uh, uh, can we you can talk about developers in general, but we're not going to talk about a specific person, number one well, in general, and number two who is not I'm here trying to understand well, how you didn't vote on Mr. Markman's uh, position. How did, how did it not is, get voted? I read this. This is part of unfinished business. This is going to come yeah. up Does it come for a vote? Week. Yes. It's a yes, commission. a vote. It's, look, are we talking, I just read it and it's right so here. So are we on that issue right now? I thought no, we were, we're at not, the end of the meeting. Is, we're on general comment. This is, I was reading a note on okay. unfinished business. So here's what I'm trying to understand in the unfinished business. Are you going to vote on that? Next week. Okay, why are you not voting on that tonight to it's recommend? The, because it's a committee meeting. This is a committee meeting. How many binding votes on our committee meetings? What Commissioner Klein said. Because what? We do not have any binding votes on our committee meeting. No, I didn't call it a binding vote. You're, you vote to recommend it to the main but this meeting. Was already, this, was already, this is already a matter that came up in full board discussion in the context of a full board meeting. So it is going to be continued and, and discussed okay. and So my comments were, should have been in the first part of my thing then. Uh, Mr. Markman, Mr. well, I would like you to recommend that Mr. Markman not be the man. Right. This, this article Stop. alone no. shows. I, we're not, okay. This article. If you want to submit that article for our consideration, submit it for our consideration. I but do. We are not talking, at, per the rules that we have established, we are not talking about specific people during public comment, and we are not, uh, we're certainly not talking about people who aren't. Even you have here. this person up for a vote next week. Next this week. Is, this is next week. That's correct. And so next. And so week. my comments are to tell you that this particular person, I do not believe okay. you should vote on and or recommend. Set, for you the can vote. feel free to send me or anyone else that article, 
th this is going to be discussed next week. It's unfinished business. Our committee meeting is about like to be finished business. And I would like to say what's in this article is a view of residents who, in doing a right to know, found out that the developers right. had tried to remove okay. their conditional... Do you have any other comments? Because your, your time is up and yes. the, 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 the finished business is about to be I very have finished. a number of things and I would like not to keep being interrupted because I can't get my time done. I'll give you, I'll give you, you an extra 30 seconds. I, I don't want an extra 30 seconds. All right, I want then, the then time you'll get speak. an extra no seconds. Okay. P pick so one no, of those two. The fictitious name thing, which I have sent to all of you, Okay, and we have a, a, an entity who I, whom I believe sincerely not to be properly registered to be able to file a case in a Commonwealth court. I sent all of you that information and I have been asking why that entity was allowed to file in Commonwealth court and we answered that filing rather than saying that they were not properly registered in order to do so. They had not registered the fictitious name to the best of my knowledge. I have asked for an answer for two years and I am asking for an answer tonight. All of you, you yourself, Commissioner, and our manager, and I'm sure at this point our solicitor has it, all of you should know that answer and I'm wondering why that answer is being withheld. So, if the answer is not being withheld, then please give me the answer tonight. I'm sure all of you in this room know that answer. First of all, um, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. If, if, this, if there was something that was sent to me, I completely missed it. I truly, legitimately okay, have no so idea what you're talking about. But also, uh, it's not up to you what questions are and aren't answered. You can stand and demand anything you want. You know, I well, can demand the, to be The rules are that questions that can thinner, be answered will be answered. Those are our speaking rules. And any questions that can't be answered at the podium, an answer will be had soon after. That's how our rules are written, Commissioner. And so yes. Mr. Manfredi was about to speak. May he finish speaking uh, on if that, Mr. Please? Manfredi would like to make a comment, he is absolutely welcome to. But that is his, at his discretion. Ms. Lehman. I think the trouble here is you have been answered. And when you ask that's me... That's the answer I got from you, but that's not an answer. Well, I'm, I'm I looking at... I sent you the entire If you're not going to listen to Mr. If you're not going to listen... I have Mr. not Man been answered. I, right. So so that's, that's Mr. not... Mr. Manfredi, if okay. you want to finish commenting, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm about so to adjourn. So the question is, what okay. is the answer? I, I'm I going to read to you an email from Mr. Lefevre to okay. you, dated okay. Monday, October 3rd, 2016, 11, 11 a.m. An email, I which, by the way... Uh, you forwarded to me and it says the solicitor's office has looked at all pleadings of the colonnade as filed every filing has been brought to the name of old york llc they refer to themselves as the colonnade but they usually say something to the effect of the building more commonly known as i'm not in a position to speak for the colonnade but it certainly appears they hope to rebrand the facility and move away from the colonnade name there are other email exchanges from mr lefevre to you that specifically tell you that the solicitor has a different opinion than you. So you have been given an answer. That is Excuse not a, me. That was not an Excuse answer. That, there, there you is not an answer. answer. You, you wanted an answer. answer. He's giving you no, an answer. I don't want a non-answer. You know you're, you're about to be done. You, you can either let him finish okay. or we adjourn so, this second. Right. Mr. Manfredi, that is I, as, not as an I answer. Also, as I also indicated to you, right. as I also indicated uh -huh. to you, I'm not an attorney. You're asking one right there. You asked me, and I told you I am not an attorney, that I could not answer that question, yet you persist in asking me to answer the same question I've told you Mr. Lefevre has answered, and that I am not an it's attorney not. to answer. He's given me the same non answer you just read. I gave you his answer, not my answer. That's I told a you my answer. That does not answer Mr. the question. Manfredi, the question. Thank you for your answer. The your question time is, is your, your time and your overtime are both complete. The question Motion is not been answered. So moved. And we're adjourned.